Hello all. Today in this video we are going to see the topic organic spectroscopy. Particularly we are going to see about proton NMR. So before moving on to the proton NMR we have to see some basic intro about spectroscopy. First of all what is spectroscopy? It is nothing but interaction of light with matter. This definition you would have studied in your lower classes itself right? Interaction of light with a matter. But now in this video we are going to see the topic uh, spectroscopy in detail. Okay. So first of all what is NMR spectroscopy? NMR is nothing but our nuclear magnetic resonance. Okay. Nuclear magnetic resonance. So you can classify this into magnetic nuclei and non-magnetic nuclei. Okay magnetic nuclei and non-magnetic nuclei for non-magnetic nuclei the i value will be zero okay for magnetic nuclei i value will be greater than zero okay that's it greater than zero it may be either half or one okay like this three by two five by two whatever it may be so if a particular species should be nmr active then it should have some i value which is greater than zero if the I value is 0, it is non-magnetic nuclei, then we can't predict the signals and it is inactive. Simply it is inactive. This magnetic nuclei and are active. Okay. I value will be 0 for, I value is greater than 0 for magnetic nuclei. This is what a very basic introduction. And how to find out which molecules are all active and which molecules are all non-magnetic and magnetic. So it is very simple. See, if... The atomic number and mass number, both the atomic and mass numbers are even, then they are inactive. Okay, they are inactive. Both the atomic number and mass number are even for a particular species, then that particular species will be inactive. Okay, they are inactive, non magnetic nuclei. For example, I will give you a simple example. See oxygen. 8 O 16 right oxygen similarly 6 carbon 12 see here this atomic number is even and mass number is also even hence this is uh, inactive okay this particular species is inactive and similarly see the carbon here the atomic number is also even and the mass number is also even hence these species are NMR inactive okay NMR inactive otherwise you can say it as non-magnetic nuclei okay non-magnetic nuclei so whenever see whenever you see the species that is having both uh, atomic and mass number even then the particular species will be NMR inactive and they are said to be non-magnetic nuclei if both the atomic and mass numbers are even then the particular species will have I value equal to zero right I told you no now if the atomic number is odd, okay, atomic number is odd, but the mass number is even in the sense, I value will be whole number. So, I value will be like 1, 3, like this, okay, whole number. If atomic number is odd and mass number is also odd, okay, if mass number is also odd, then i value will be an integral value of half like 1 by 2 3 by 2 7 by 2 like this okay so wait, there are basic these are all basic conditions okay if you want to predict a signal for nmr then that particular species should be magnetic nuclei if it has the value of if it has the i value as zero it is NMR inactive. So you can predict the NMR signals and uh, the multiplicity for those which are all active. To be active, it should not have both the atomic numbers and mass numbers as even. Okay. Either one of the either one of them should be uh, odd number or both should be odd numbers. Okay. This is what the basic condition for NMR. So both odd then i value will be an integral of half integral of half if uh, both even then i value will be zero one odd another that is a uh, mass number is even then i value will be a whole number this is what the overall view okay this is what the overall view for 
enamel then what you should know is we are using radio waves okay we are using radio waves in nmr okay radio waves in nmr then you would have studied this right e is equal to h nu e is directly proportional to frequency energy is directly proportional to the frequency so here see first of all energy levels will be like this they will be very closer okay very closer to each other but after applying magnetic field okay after applying magnetic field they will split okay if suppose i am having only two levels only two levels then in presence of magnetic field the absence of magnetic field they will be like this but in presence of magnetic field they will split like this okay they will split like this there is some energy gap right there is some energy gap what happens is when you apply radio waves okay when you apply radio waves the molecules that are present here will move on okay will move to the excited state this is what we will see as transitions okay as transitions so there will be a movement of nucleus from here to here okay uh, you would have studied in your basic classes like uh, this is ground state this is excited state where the molecules will be high definitely the molecules will, the number will be high in the ground state right so they will move to the excited state in order to balance in order to balance okay we are seeing these transition as signals in nmr okay this is how nmr works then one thing you must know see here if the electron density okay if the electron density is high that is known as shielded okay shielded if electron density is low then that particular compound will be known as d shielded okay d shielded for example see here you have ch3 which is attached to chlorine group chlorine what kind of group is chlorine it is electron withdrawing group right it will tend to pull the electrons towards itself as a result what happens to this proton is electron density will be low actually it should have some electron density around it right it will have some electron density but what happens is to try to pull the electron density towards itself as a result density of the electron is low now so whenever you have electron density low it is known as d shielded okay it is known as d shielded because there is no electrons around it okay hence it is known as d shielded this you must know okay without knowing this basic you can't uh, predict the signals and uh, predict the chemical shift value and all so whenever electron density is high it is shielded and whenever electron density is low it is d shielded in simple whenever you have electron withdrawing group density electron density will be low and hence it is known as d shielded so d shielded means you will have high chemical shift value okay high chemical shift value this is delta chemical shift value okay so whenever you have d shielded protons it will have high high chemical shift value okay high chemical shift value but suppose if electron density is very high then that particular species is known as shielded if this is shielded in the sense you will have low shift value okay low delta value that is chemical shift value will be less this is what the basic of nmr okay whenever you have d shielded you will have high chemical shift value whenever there is shielded proton you will have low chemical shift value okay this is a basic understanding then what you must know is see the standard that we are using is that is the reference that we are using is tetramethylsilane okay tms shortly known as tms well, how what's the structure of tetramethylsilane is nothing but four methyl groups that is attached to the silicon okay tetramethylsilane see why we are using this tetramethylsilane as a standard because see here there are 12 hydrogens okay these 12 hydrogens are in the same environment 
how i am saying that these are all in the same environment because these methyl groups are directly attached to silicon right so all the protons are in similar environment hence you have 12 hydrogens 12 chemically equivalent hydrogens chemically equivalent hydrogens as a result you will get a sharp signal whose intensity is also high okay whose intensity is also high and uh, one more thing the tetramethyl silane is inert okay this is inert chemically inert it won't react with the uh, species that you are having see suppose i'm i want to know the nmr peaks okay i want to know the signals for benzene this tms won't react with benzene this, it is chemically inert okay this is one of the reasons why we are using uh, references tetramethyl silane okay this protons are all shielded protons whether this is shielded or de shielded in the sense shielded how i am saying that this is shielded is because compare the electronegativity of carbon and silicon carbon and silicon which is more electronegative so carbon silicon comes under same group right carbon silicon germanium tin lead right so if carbon silicon comes under the same group electronegativity decreases when we move down the group right electronegativity decreases when we move down the group so carbon will have more electronegativity compared to that of the silicon hence carbon will have a negative charge whereas silicon will have a positive charge right partially so now this is shielded right whenever you have electron density high it is known as shielded protons hence these 12 hydrogens are shielded okay these are all shielded this is why we are using tetramethyl silane as the standard for nmr okay because it is inert and it is volatile okay it is volatile easily it can evaporate okay volatile these are all the basics in nmr uh, the very important thing that you must keep in your mind is like electron density if high then that is known as shielded protons and if it is shielded then it will have low delta value okay low chemical shift value and similarly if electron density is low it is known as de shielded and de shielded will have high high chemical shift value okay high delta value so if electron density should be high then there will be electron donating group okay electron donating group here electron withdrawing group will be there okay these are all the basic understandings these are all the basic things that you should keep in your mind i have told you that the chemical shift values are indicated by this symbol it is delta uh, in parts per million okay parts per million is equal to hertz by megahertz this is the formula this megahertz is the operating frequency of the instrument okay operating frequency of the instrument it is a precisional frequency so delta is equal to hertz by megahertz okay this is a very important one this is these are the chemical shift values okay these are the chemical shift values see if you are having sp3 hybridized okay what is sp3 hybridized if you have ch3 ch2 suppose here you are having ch3 here they are sp3 hybridized right how will you know the hybridization just count the number of sigma bonds okay if the number of sigma bonds are found to be see for uh, methane number of sigma bonds around the carbon is 4 right hence 4 means sp3 hybridized okay suppose in ethylene okay in ethylene it will be like this count the number of uh, sigma bonds here 1 2 3 3 which means it is having sp2 hybridization right this is how you can calculate the hybridization and number of sigma bonds in organic molecules right the sp3 hybridized hydrogen will have 0.5 to 2 ppm this is the value okay sp3 hybridized will have 0.5 to 2 ppm but suppose if it is attached to that of the electronegative atom for example ch2cl okay if it is attached to ch2cl i told you that chlorine is an electron withdrawing group if it is electron withdrawing group it will tend to pull the electron towards itself if it pulls the electron towards itself this hydrogen will be de-shielded 
since it is de-shielded it will have high chemical shift value i told you no this is why sp3 hybridized atom which is attached to electron negative group will have 2 to 5 ppm okay generally sp3 will have a value of 0.5 to 2 but if it is attached to the electron negative group then the value will be 2 to 5 okay next generally aromatic protons will have the value of 6 to 8 ppm okay value is around 6 to 8 ppm aromatic in the sense most probably the ring will be there okay the ring compounds these hydrogens will have the value of 6 to 8 these are all sp2 hybridized right because uh, this will have double bond hence they will have sp2 hybridization and the aromatic protons will have 6 to 8 ppm suppose the same sp2 hybridized proton but in aliphatic compounds when will it have c in case of ethylene you have double bond right here i told you that uh, the hybridization is sp2 1 2 3 3 sigma bonds which means sp2 hybridization so in aliphatic compounds also sp2 hybridization is possible in that case 4 to 5 ppm okay the value is around 4 to 5 ppm next for carbonyl that is aldehyde okay specifically for aldehydes and ketones if you are having the compounds like aldehydes and ketones then the value is between 8 to 10 ppm okay the value will be around 8.5 to 10 ppm next if you are having acid group in your compound then the value is between 10 to 12 ppm okay 10 to 12 ppm these are the chemical shift values this you should keep in your mind so, this will be really helpful for you when you solve the problems okay when you solve the problems this will be really useful for you so kindly note these values okay in the next video we will try to calculate the number of signals okay try to calculate the number of signals and also multiplicity also so if you know how to find out the number of signals and multiplicity and if you know the chemical shift values then it is very easy quite easy to elucidate the structure okay because in jam and net and gate they will give you some data okay they will give you some basic data so with the help of the data with the help of chemical shift values and multiplicity you have to find out the structure okay so i think organic spectroscopy is very easy if you know these things number of signals multiplicity and structural elucidation so in the next video we will try to finish these things okay so if you like this video try to share with your friends stay tuned thank you so much for watching